Hi everyone, my name is Minister Barry Haggerty. Welcome to Kings, where we experience life with people, power, and purpose. Thanks for taking your time to be here with us today, either in person or online. If you happen to be a guest here today, you can text NEW to 907-357-2065 and fill out the digital connect card. And take that confirmation email that you get to the next steps desk where you'll receive a free gift. So if the person next to you is texting, tell them, just hold up, you know, do it later. Because, uh, because I'm not joking about what I'm about to say. And uh, you might not be hearing it if you're messing around on your phone. So I ain't playing. All right, so let me just tell you what they're, they, they tell you never do what I'm about to do. <laughs> Pastor Karen said, oh, great. How many of you as students have revived? Pay, atten pay attention, because that if you, if, if, if you go ahead and do it, I'm going to embarrass you, okay? And you'll be like, well, you may never come back. Well, that might be good. Because some people come to church, and they're not here to, to receive from the Lord. They come to maybe be a wolf or cause problems. And, and so I'm happy. I'm a shepherd. I love, I love you. I love my people. I have a rod. I will use it. Well, I'm just, I'm just telling you. My blood boiled just a little bit, but I might not have perceived it right, but I'm going to take it. See, when I was younger, I'd already acted on it. I know, but you're about to. And All right. So how many of you study a revival? I'll just give you a quick lesson, then I'll make my point, and we'll get into 1 Corinthians 6, which will be very, way more aggressive than what I'm about to say. So if you study revival, you'll find people like Smith Wigglesworth who would say things like, they'd sing songs like, only believe. Only, how many of you remember that old Pentecostal healing song, only believe? And they, they really believed the scripture where it says, where there was, when there were accord, when there were, was an agreement, when, when the 120 were in one accord. See, most of you listening right now, because you're like, well, pastor, man, he's fired up, something's going to happen, right? That's right. Right, right, exactly. When there's an accord, most of the problems, I think, in outpourings, or the lack of, I should say, is that people don't get hungry. And they don't get thirsty. And so they're distracted by the demon of the iPhone and the Android or whatever it is. And, and, and they're so sucked in to a device. And so correction like I'm about to bring doesn't really happen. Now I'm all for, I'm all for using social media. I've got, I've got a Twitter I've got a YouTube, you know, I've, I've got a, a Facebook, I've I, I got an Instagram, the church has them, I use them, I, I use them to reach people, I use it to witness, I, I use it to, to store photos, and, and just, it's like a little, you know, a little social picture book of last weekend, you know, went down to Valdez, it was amazing, these amazing photos, it's beautiful, it's awesome. And I think there's a time for it, Right? But Smith Wigglesworth and, and others, Maria Wordsworth, Edder, I can go on and name different people that flowed in revival. And most of them are evangelists. So evangelists, just pretend, if you're offended right now, just pretend I'm the guest evangelist, all right? The pastor will be back on Sunday. <laughs> most of them are evangelists, not pastors, because pastors usually are to be kind and gracious. And we're supposed to be kind. We're supposed to be gracious. But I've found uh, that, that sometimes things need to be corrected. And if you don't correct things in your family, look, if you don't self-correct, you're going to have the devil running your life. So if you don't correct things in your own personal life, then you're going to have problems. If you don't correct things in your family, you're going to have problems. You don't correct things in your marriage, you're going to have problems. I got rebuked by Pastor Karen today. Did I repent yet? I did to the Lord. Sorry. Sorry. Thanks. So... You know, correction's good. What they would literally do, evangelist John Duke, is they would, if they sensed unbelief, they would tell them, get out. They would say, leave. If, you, if you're in unbelief, you don't want to be here. You're in unbelief, why don't you leave? That's not very pastoral, is it?
1995, I got so touched by the fire of God. And it was uh, 1,000, 1,500 people in a sanctuary. Most people were on the ground. If I already, if you already, if I already lost your attention, you have some serious ADD, okay? So, <laughs> all right. I mean, like, really, you got, like, looking at screens so much, I got to change what I'm saying every two minutes. Try to focus. And so in 95, I got so touched by God, the power of God came down. In a, I, there was somebody, literally, it's one of the greatest miracles that Rodney Howard Brown has ever seen. I saw it. I was in the meeting. It was a man that got touched by the power of God, and we had six sets of stairs, six or seven. So there's two here, right? I mean, I think it's maybe six, seven stairs. He, roll, he was rolling up the stairs and rolling down. Roll up, roll down, like a window shade. Now listen, that's before they talked about core strength. So I, I, I'm just telling you. That's before core work. And the other thing is, he did it for half an hour. Or, or I, I mean, I, I don't know. I was all going, what, what's, what is that? God on me, God everywhere. It was explained that signs and wonders are signs that make you wonder. <laughs> Lives were changed. Drug addicts were carried out, couldn't even drive their car. They had people that couldn't talk for over 24 hours. What happened to meetings like that? I think they're still around. But many times we're so distracted. I'm getting to my point of why I told you to tell the person to stop texting for a second and see if you could just listen for a minute. Three quarters of the place was leveled on the ground, weeping, crying, laughing, somebody leading a heavenly choir. I mean, that's what it looked like. Some lady on the right-hand side. You remember that, Mom? You remember, right? Mom, you were there. I just, it was like, oh. Hey, settle down. It was like heaven. It was, it was heaven. It had an atmosphere It's been a while since that happened. <laughs> what you laughing at, Brooklyn? <laughs> I was so blown away by what I was seeing and having my own encounter, but still enjoying other people's. Y'all listening? That I, I, the heaven lady leading the heavenly choir, people weeping, people crying, people laughing, guy rolling up like, like, like a window shade up and down sets of seven stairs with core strength that was supernatural. I don't know if it was an angel. It was rolling them like a roll of carpet, you know? I, I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know, I don't know what was going on, but I, I was just like, oh, God, you're awesome. Oh, God, I'm weeping. And realizing in that environment that as jacked up as my life was back 25 years ago, that I was going to be all right. It did something in me. It just brought a confidence. It brought a, it brought a surety that if God could take some 60-year-old man and roll him up and, set, up and down a set of stairs for half an hour, he could probably take, help me in about 30 seconds, no problem. Come on, if he can make the earth in six days and rest on the seventh, it'd just take him one second to fix your problem. But many times, you're on the phone or you're distracted. I'm getting to my point. So as I prop myself up, I'm hanging on a pew, weeping, and three guys come in from another church. They have their arms folded. They walk, and how do you know they're from the other church? Because I knew them from the other church. I'd met, I'd met them. And they, they come walking up the center aisle with their arms folded. Because <laughs> this is the part you want to pay attention because here comes a rebuke. With their arms folded. Verse 
looking around, and they stop right next to me. So if you're me, they stop next to me, and they're like, looking around, and they're like, dude, dude, look at that guy. Look at that guy. Look at the idiot. Look at that idiot. Move of God. And the, and the other guy says, no, 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 look at that, look at that one. I'm talking 1,500 people having an encounter with God. 1,500. And they began to mock. And they began to make fun. I don't know what happened to the one guy. The other two died early, early deaths in their 30s, shortly thereafter. So let me give this promise to you, and then we'll get into 1 Corinthians 6. If you mock, if you listen close, if you mock the Holy Spirit, I will kick you out. You say, well, that's kind of intense. I know. I'm usually not like that. I'm usually nice. But I saw something earlier that made me so mad. It was everything I could do to not just make, embarrass the heck out of you. The thing is, I could have been wrong. Maybe they were getting touched, but I don't think so. Lift your hands to heaven. Everybody's like, do, am I doing that right right now? No, come on, it's okay. It's okay. But if you come here to mock, we will escort you out. You can go mock somewhere else. Don't do it here. You know why? Because all the other folks that will have an experience that will transform your life could possibly be hindered by your demonic activity. You, you, you want to get set free, stay. You don't want to get set free, leave. Come on, come on. I love you. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and say, oh, God's good. Come on, look at your other and say, oh, <laughs> Lord. Oh, come on, stand up on your feet and give God the craziest praise you ever did. Ready? Say, God. All right, st stay there. Take your Bible. Stand on your feet. St 1 Corinthians 6. Woo! Must be all that fasting or something, eh? <sighs> First Corinthians 6. Find verse 9. Now, if you thought I was intense, you better buckle up. Because here comes the word. Are you ready? Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, those are people that have sex outside of marriage, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. Adultery is having sex with somebody else outside of your covenant of marriage. That's adultery. Nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Everybody say, whoa. <laughs> this is one of my favorite passages of Scripture. You know why? You know why? Right here. Verse 11. And such were some of you, but you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the... Hey, come on. Is anybody been delivered? from their old life? Anybody been set free from idolatry, from torment, from drug addiction? Give them a crazy praise one more time. Woo. You may be seated. Strong passage. I, Mr. Soundman, you're doing such a great job. I think I want my limiter removed, but, but I'm open to consultation. This is one of, my, one of my favorite. Do you know what a limiter is? That's, that's like if the, if the preacher ever loses his mind and really start yelling and shouting, it caps him. I hate being controlled. <laughs> limiter is like a spirit of religion. An audio limiter. And it limits things so people don't, don't get their ears hurt. You know, people sometimes need to have some stuff pulled out of their ears. I'm fixing to hurt your ears in a minute right now, but I'm not talking about volume of sound. This is a powerful, powerful passage. Completely politically incorrect. I mean, you want to talk about political correctness. You read this, and you're like, 
He just stomped on everything. Extramarital affairs. That's not what it is. It's adultery. Fornication. No, that's, that's premarital sex. No, it's fornication. All these terms have been dumbed down. Sexual preference. No, homosexuality. And then it goes on to talk about sodomites, and, it, and it's not mincing any words. It's talking about homosexuals and homosexual behavior, homosexual tendency, so on and so forth. So it's very politically incorrect, but it clearly shows, and I, and I love verse 11. It's why I don't, you know, I, reading that litany of sin, which some of us were, is exciting when you get to verse 11 because it says basically no matter what bondage you find yourself in, no matter what sin is you're steeped in, no matter what difficulty, what drug addiction, no matter how you've been twisted and tormented, God can save you, heal you, sanctify you, and set you free. He can set you free. Come on, someone say God set me free. I mean, that's encouraging. Do you have to make distinctions? Well, the Word of God makes distinctions. You can take it up with the Lord if you want to. I don't like making it. Well, you better make some. You don't like judging now. You're going to hate when you get to heaven and find yourself perhaps in a place of outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. I'd far prefer to correct you right now. I would love the rebuke of the Lord now than hear it later when it's too late. <laughs> it says in Matthew 7, I do a program called ETS, Eat the Scroll, and uh, I attempt to get it in the Word. And what I mean by that, there's sometimes because of my schedule that uh, I'm, I'm traveling or in a mountain or stuck in Thompson Pass or but mostly we try to get in the Word. And we've been doing a, a series on the Sermon on the Mount. And Matthew 7, I want to read this to you. We looked at it today. I'll go back to it tomorrow, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many. In other words, it's popular. There's many. It's the thing. Broad. Easy. Tolerance. Don't have to make distinctions as long as you believe. So you have to remember that the, the Apostle Paul is writing the church in Corinth. These are believers. These are believers. And he's telling them, <laughs> just want to remind you, y'all fornicators and y'all idolaters and you adulterers here, you, don't, you ain't going to inherit no kingdoms. You live like that. That's for all the people from West Kentucky. <laughs> Come on, someone say the narrow gate. The narrow gate is unpopular. The narrow gate, you really live for God according to God's prescribed way. He said, if you love me, you'll obey my word. You love me, you'll obey my, my word. His word is clear, crystal clear, crystal clear. That there is a way of being right. And it's by the blood. That's an imparted, pardon me, imputed righteousness. God's righteousness. How many of you know he's perfect? You believe on Jesus and his perfection, his righteousness, if you will, comes upon you. Otherwise, you would never be able to go and pray and talk to him. You would never be able to experience God's presence and power if you weren't made right. With some exception. So God's got a way of being and doing right, right? Imparted righteousness, imputed, that's imputed, you get God's righteousness. Imparted righteousness is living it out. It's living right. It's not mocking. It's not, it's not being an adulterer. It's being faithful. It's being committed. It's, it's loving God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. It's, it's being a truth teller, not a liar. It's keeping your word even though it hurts. It's, it's being a Christian. Christian means little, little Christ or Christ-like. Christian is to behave like Christ. So if you say you're a Christian, you ought to be behaving like Jesus, like Christ. And there are those 
who proclaim over people who follow God's word as extremists, as um, fanatics. I mean, just can't you just relax? Can you relax? Pastor, can you just chill? I don't, I don't have much of that. <laughs> you, you want chill? There's, that's someone else. That's, that's, not, that's not us. We do need to be loving. We need to be kind. Evil does exist. Please hear me. Evil exists, and it can work through your life, in your life. It can work through your actions. And this text is profound, and we're going to talk about the power of the Holy Ghost here in just a little bit. But I wanted to set it up with this text because so many people name the name of Jesus but live, live a life of abomination. You say you're a Christian, but if you live doing these things, um, you're not a Christian, actually. But I'm really glad you're here so that you can hear how to be set free. So you can be forgiven, so you can be washed, so you can be cleansed, so you can be sanctified in the name. Such were some of you. It's, it's uh, all of us. You like you read that and you wipe out the whole church. You're like, no, I was born a Christian. I was a Christian. Oh, my. Okay. We've been programmed in modern psychology to... Um, to believe it's not our fault. In fact, you can do you can do studies of of mass murderers. Who said Charles Manson? You remember him? They did a documentary on him. He blamed his mother. I got news for you. No matter what your mom did. As evil as it might have been, I'm not saying that, that, you know, she was Mother Teresa and all that. I'm not saying that. She might have done you wrong. But let me tell you right now, no matter what your mom did, no matter what your dad did, you'll have no excuses on the day. Please hear me. Don't get offended at me, please. You'll have no excuses when you stand before the throne. You know why? You say, Pastor, you don't know what happened to me. No, I don't know what happened, but I have my own story. And I know that you can be set free from the torment of being abused. I know you can be set free from whatever happened in your family. You might not know your mom. You might not know your dad. You, maybe you were a latchkey kid. Maybe, you know I mean, on and on and on, fill in the blanks. There's all kinds of people who are like, I wasn't bottle fed. I was bottle fed. I wasn't breast fed. That's why I was fed. They're finding all kinds of things now that people weren't breast fed. They have problems. I got news for you. The power of God is bigger than the fact of whether you were breastfed or bottle fed, whether you had cloth diapers or pampers. The, the power of God is bigger than anything you went through in your life. And I don't mean to, I'm not trying to under demetiate that. I'm not trying to make that a small thing. I understand. It's painful. I understand. But there has to come a time when you realize that you have to choose. Because all excuses on the day, all excuses when you stand before the throne, every single excuse will fall flat. Especially since you came to this church and are hearing this message. So yeah, uh, Manson blamed his mother. Psychology would teach you to blame people, to blame others many times. So you against psychology? I'm against unbiblical psychology. I'm all for biblical-based psychology. I think it's great. Tremendous counselors, some wonderful friends I have. To believe that it's not your fault and to blame others is um, irresponsible and not true. See, when you read this, it says that no, 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 no. You are responsible for your life now. If you can understand the words coming out of my mouth, you might still live in a, in a family that's broken. You 
are responsible for the choices you make. It's called the glory of man. And I, 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 I didn't like it at first, but, but I like it now. I, I, I just wanted God to just take care of everything. And then he told me, I took care of everything, now take it. We're responsible. You say, wow, Pastor. This text tells us plainly that our, what evil actions come through us aren't bigger than the hope that God provides. I said, whatever's happened or whatever you've done is not bigger than Jesus. Sin doesn't make God nervous, doesn't make me nervous either. I get irritated when I see people who call themselves believers and act the fool. But then I have to remember that I did the same thing. This text tells us how we can be changed by the name or the authority of the Lord. Look at verse 11 with me. And such were some of you. But you were washed. Mm. You're not locked into whatever you've gone through in your life, no matter how difficult, no matter how painful, no matter what abuse. I'm not making fun of that. I am trying to goad you, prod you into the reality that you don't have to stay that way. And if your life does stay broken, and if it does stay addicted, and if it does stay adulterous, and if you do continue to live in idolatry, it's not God's fault, and you can't blame it on a bottle. You can't blame it on, on cloth diapers or pampers. You can't blame it on the fact that you were black or white or native Alaskan. You can't blame it on anything. You can't blame it on anything. Your life... Yeah, look at me, son. Keep looking. Don't look away. I love you. Your life will become what you choose. God loves you. Come on, lift your hand to heaven. Say, my life will become what I choose. Now, I don't want you to twist that. You know, we're all dependent on the grace of God. We're, but if you choose life, you speak life, and you make right choices, you be faithful, God will reward you, and he will bless you, and he will heal you. Father, thank you for this precious young man. Come here, son. Lift your hands. hand of God's coming on you in an increased way. You could give a list of reasons. The Lord's touching you tonight. I'm healing your dream life. I'm releasing peace to you. And I see you stepping in the direction of the plan of God. I see God's power coming on you even now. Holy Ghost. I command you to be the son and the daughter of the living God.
know, sometimes we're so insensitive. I'm mindful that one, one of the main reasons I'm able to stand here with a microphone in my hand and preach and minister under a sweet presence of the Lord and the wonderful things that have been bestowed upon me because I came from the family I came from. Well, my family wasn't perfect. They got divorced, but God help you if you cross my mother with those clogs. Does anybody remember those clogs in the 70s? Does anybody remember the wooden clogs of the 70s? Thank God for all the clogging, and I'm not talking about dancing, or the wooden spoon. That wasn't perfect, but we knew we were loved, and we, I mean, there was enough right to cut the word somehow enough of God's mercy, God's grace. I'd be in prison if I didn't have the level of family that I had. I mean, family needed healing, and family's gotten healed, but definitely you would be. Amen, Wally. You didn't have a father that gave you the fear of God and prayed over you every single night. You told me the story. So you didn't have a mother that, that loved God. Not in a Pentecostal way like, like this, but they had a love for God. You had to fear of the Lord. You're raised with the fear of the Lord. Look at you now. Look at your kids. So you and your wife, your kids, and your grandkids all serving God. Ain't nobody smoking crack. They're all loving Jesus, all reading the word, all serving God, all worshiping him, all at the top of their field. Do you think that's luck? That's not luck. That's the blessing of God, and that's choosing. You can choose to walk in the blessing, or you can choose to go the way of your flesh. The flesh wants to party. The flesh wants to do all the stuff that we read. The flesh will take you deeper, further, into ugly and ugly places. Some of you don't realize that you're, you know, the first generation, you're broken curses, off. Now your kids can have to walk in freedom and power and authority. Hallelujah. There was a moment that came for you, my preaching, prophesying sister, where you should have been killed. It was like a, a it just so sovereignly, supernaturally, God protected you. Like in a bed at night, things happen, you should have lost your life. But God, because God saw it down, he knows the end from the beginning, he saw that you would, he saw that you would eventually yield to him, as stubborn as you were. Oh, I, I know you guys. He saw how he would partner you up with somebody who's been a part of our church for fourth generations who was four generations. His kids are fifth generation kings. That's amazing. And he's stubborn also for the Lord now. And he saw how you would bring forth all these amazing children. And I see the power of God coming on your kids. I see all of them going into ministry. I see them. I see like preachers and worship leaders and pastors and evangelists. It's kind of like you got the fivefold right all up in your house. How did that happen? You said yes. All the times you were corrected, you said yes. You kept turning the other cheek. You kept yielding and dealing with your strange pastors. Sometimes hurt you. And the Lord says, I'm promoting you. I'm promoting you. What are you saying? I, I'm telling you, you can have an amazing life. We are victors, not victims. Lose the victim mentality. Come on, lift your hands to heaven all across this place. Lord, thank you. Thanks for listening to this message today. If the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and you realize that you need Jesus as your Savior and you'd like to pray with me to either commit your life to Jesus for the first time or rededicate your life to the Lord, repeat this prayer after me. Father God, thank you for sending your son Jesus 
to die for my sins. Jesus, thank you for dying for me and bringing me forgiveness. I'm sorry for my sins. I repent of them today, and I ask you to cleanse me and wash me of all my sin. I commit to live for you all the rest of the days of my life. And I pray this in your name, Jesus, amen. If you prayed that prayer today, would you text the word SAVED to 907-357-2065? We'd like to send you some information and some materials that will help you in your Christian walk. God bless.